You may be seated. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Grace and peace be yours in fullest measure, through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Amen. We have come together before the face of God to celebrate seven years of marriage for Buddy and Maricel. We rejoice that Buddy and Maricel's years together have honored the will of God for marriage and for the concern of the Christian church and its well-being. Let us celebrate as this is a service of worship by singing together a song in spirit and truth.
seated as you you many of you know I think if you know buddy and Marisol music is a big part of their life and so it will be a big part of this celebration of their vow renewal and our time together and so I hope you brought your singing voices buddy and Marisol have invited you here tonight to celebrate with them and to witness as they celebrate promises kept and as they renew those promises today Buddy, will you take Maricel to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and protect her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? Amen. Maricel, will you take Buddy to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honor him, and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? Amen. We rejoice in the seven years in which they have kept those promises with each other and they renew them this evening as a new promise to keep them continually. And they will have the chance in the presence of Christ to keep those promises for a lifetime and then beyond. And they invite you to sing with them of that lifetime and that beyond. Will you join and sing together 10,000 Reasons? <laughs>
may be seated. The word of the Lord this evening comes from 1 Corinthians 13. Before we turn to the word of the Lord, let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we bless your name and we give you thanks for the gift of love, the gift of marriage, the gift of companionship and all that comes with it. As we celebrate with Buddy and Marisol this evening, seven years of marriage, may you remind us that marriage is a glimpse into a greater relationship that we have with you. It is a vision of what our life with Christ is all about. And as we see it lived well in others, we are challenged and reminded of living that life with you. Open our hearts this evening to hear your word and to hear our place in it. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed, but strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I was thinking about this uh, service and Marisol and Buddy had asked me uh, to do it and vow renewal service um, seemed a little bit odd after seven years of marriage. I was like, this seems like 
a very short window into then and I thought well what could come up at seven years it feels like a seven-year itch only like a Christian Christian way to scratch it I guess in some sense like I didn't know what was going on but then I thought about it a little bit and in light of the text for this evening I was thinking about the kinds of relationships that we have and I think we can divide them up into two different types of relationships there's um, consumer relationships and most of our relationships function in that kind of way is basically you provide something for me and then I receive it and I'm a happy consumer or I supply something for you so I have a consumer relationship with ShopRite as long as they provide me with delicious food and and good vegetables and fruit I go and I partake in what they have to offer and when they don't then I go elsewhere uh, I turn to Trader Joe's or some other place you know stop and shop of course lots of options some of you might work for some of them right? so that's a consumer relationship and if if they do what they're supposed to do then I will remain in relationship with them and and most of our relationships function that way that's how we are in our work the boss pays me I'll continue to work boss stops paying me I'm not showing up yeah. same thing from the boss if I keep showing up boss will pay me I stop coming to work very quickly the paycheck's gonna dry up consumer relationship most of our relationships work that way tonight though we're talking about a covenant relationship marriage is not a consumer relationship based on goods and supply and demand but it's a covenant relationship. And covenant relationships are different. If as a consumer, ShopRite does not supply all that I need, I'll go to Stop and Shop. If they fail me, I'll go somewhere else. It doesn't work that way in marriage because it's a covenant relationship. The idea behind a covenant relationship is I will do all that I can out of love for you and when I fail you you will not walk away and you will do all that you can for me and when you fail me I will not walk away it's a it's a relationship built on a reciprocity of commitment commitment that is not easily broken and in that sense then marriage is in fact a window in which we see a reflection of our relationship with Christ and and the only difference is as broken and flawed human beings we sometimes imagine that we can get out of covenants and Christ says there's nothing you can do that breaks my love for you there's nothing that you can do that overwhelms the love I have for you. So when I think about consumer relationships, there's, there's this reality that kind of builds on itself. I have to go to shop right later tonight, and then tomorrow Trader Joe's, and maybe later in the week stop and shop. I've got lots of things I've got to buy. And each time I go, they'll provide that what I need, and if they don't, I'll go somewhere else. There's a continual kind of fulfilling and living into the relationship. It's not really so much so in covenant, although there are ways it can be that. You know? And so I thought a little bit about them asking me after seven years, can we do a vow renewal service? And I said, that feels odd. But you know what? It feels scriptural too. Because you know what I read in Scripture all the time? Is God renewing His covenant with Israel. Constantly, over and over and over, God calls Israel back and says, let's do this again. Let's make a new covenant. And so you see covenants all over the place. God makes a covenant with Adam and Eve. God makes a covenant with Noah and his family. God makes a covenant with Abraham. God makes a covenant with Isaac. God makes a covenant with his son Jacob. Eventually he makes a covenant with Daniel. He talks about a new covenant in Jeremiah. And we see over and over and over again these rituals of renewing the covenant that God has with his people. 
When I thought about this, then this made sense. Why not have a ritual to renew the covenant that Buddy and Marisol have made to each other? And there are little ways in which we renew that covenant all the time. But this is a big way. And it feels like the kind of thing that God does to renew a covenant with His people. And if marriage is a window into our relationship with God, then this should be a window into our relationship with Christ. A renewal of a covenant. A coming back together and saying, I do, Jesus. And hearing again that Jesus says to us, I do too. So this seemed like a perfect sort of fit. And I hope it works for you and reminds you that in your marriages, you might renew your covenant. Now, it can be like this, and that's fine, or it could be in small ways. And in your life with God, that opportunity to renew the covenant, the covenant of your baptism, the covenant of your confession with Christ, the covenant that calls you into a relationship with God, in all of these things is an opportunity to be refreshed, to be renewed, to be sustained and encouraged, to give you strength for the next seven years, or 20 years, or 40 years, however long it takes before you renew those covenant vows again. May God strengthen you and encourage you and bless you for the next seven years. Let's pray. Holy God, we rejoice that our relationship with you is not consumer-based. That we are not in the rat race of always producing things that prove our righteousness. For the truth is, we would fall short. Remind us again this evening that we are in a covenant with you. And at times, those covenants need to be rejuvenated and refreshed because sometimes we're broken. Sometimes we're lost. Sometimes promises aren't kept and we need to forgive. In all of these things, draw us back to You. Draw us into each other. We thank You, O Lord, for Your goodness. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Buddy and Marisol would love to encourage you to sing with them for one more song and then they'll have a chance to share with you and with each other those vows that they have written for each other in this renewal service. So if you'd stand and join with us as we sing together One Thing Remains.
gives up never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love seated. I'm having them stand up there. You can see them better. They are going to, instead of repeat after me because their vows are longer than that, I'm just going to turn it over to them and let them uh, renew their vows together before you. I, buddy, take you, Maricel, to be my wedded wife. With deepest joy, I continue to receive you into my life, that together we may be one. As is Christ to his body, the church, so I will continue to be to you a loving and faithful husband. Always will I perform my headship over you, even as Christ does over me, knowing that his lordship is one of the holiest desires for my life. I promise you my deepest love, my fullest devotion, my most tender care. I promise that I will live first unto God rather than to others or even you. I promise that I will lead our lives into a life of faith and hope in Christ Jesus, ever honoring God's guidance by his spirit through the word. And so throughout life, no matter what may lie ahead of us, I pledge to you my life as a living and faithful husband. I, Marisol, take you, buddy, to be my wedded husband with deepest joy, I come to receive my life with you. As you have pledged to me your life and love, so I too happily give you my life and in confidence submit myself to your leadership as to the Lord. As is the church in her relationship to Christ, so I will be to you, buddy. I will live first unto our God and then unto you, loving you, obeying you, caring for you, and ever seeking to please you. God has prepared me for you, and as I will ever strengthen, help, comfort, and encourage you. Therefore, throughout life, no matter what may be ahead of us, I pledge to you my life as an obedient and faithful wife. Amen. Now that Buddy and Maricel have renewed their promises to each other by solemn vows and with the joining of hands, let us celebrate together their seven years of marriage as husband and wife. Buddy, you may kiss your bride. Let no one come between those whom God has joined together. The power of God keep you. The love of God be in your life together. The grace of God strengthen your love that it may endure forever. Amen. And we have one closing song for us um, this evening, which is the power of your love. Before we sing the song, I want to thank the guys uh, up here. For those of you who don't know, this is my nephew Daniel playing the piano. <laughs> my son David on guitar. And my stepson Andrew on the bass. So it's all the family. And 
Michael Sheriff, who's my best friend, was our best man at our wedding, and he's also our drummer. Please stand.
Your spirit leads me on in the power of your Thank you all for coming. It was stormy, it was flooding downstairs, and we were supposed to have our swimsuit on, but um, I can't believe that you guys are here. I love you all to death. Uh, I can't, I, you mean so much to me for making this day real and happening, because we thought that we had to cancel. But I thank God for all of you, and I love you. And uh, we will quickly do a photo session quickly, first family and then friends. Um, before we go downstairs, I know you're hungry. I'm starving, but um. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. At at really, at like 3:30, we were ready to cancel this because the whole downstairs was flooded. It but was unbelievable. unbelievable. <laughs> but God has a plan for everything. Whatever happens, He has a plan, and we just submit to His plan and we thank God for everything, no matter what happens, good or bad. All things work out for the best to those who love and serve God. Amen. Thank you. Um, we will call the family, um, just our boys, to our boys. Down front? I stand in the front, right? Yeah, right in front of me. 